Please click on the red subscribe button below this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Then click on the bell icon for notifications. Thank you very much and God bless you. Across the nation, um, is it, are you talking about workers in the private or public sector? About those um, traders, self-employed persons? I mean, um, it's a big loss to everybody. And I think we should not trivialize a serious national issue such as this by saying, where is, where is even the budgetary provision for all of that? I'm sure if uh, President Buhari he wakes up tomorrow and says, okay, we call it the postponement, I'm adding 3000 to every federal civil servant salary. The next thing you hear is they are trying to buy, buy, buy votes. That is the next thing. Same Frank will say that. I am almost certain he will say that. If the president by proclamation, the Senate, the National Assembly will say, no, that's not in the budget. Where is that coming from? These are infractions. I mean, well, although look, it does look, it does look, mm -hmm. Mr. Fashua, you are an economist, yeah. <laughs> so I want you to weigh in on this. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, let's take a look at it this way. Let's even put aside. Okay, let's come back. Uh, well, to we can, we, uh, uh, so, so, let's, so, so, let's, so, so for uh, me, I will have said it over and over. It's an unfortunate. It's a, I mean, look at the, the, the damage to the economy. I mean, the weekend economy for this week and next week are like dead because the well, weekend the economy week, is also and, huge. And the, the and week of March, no, the March, ninth. March the ninth might not be too bad. What about because schools? Because there's enough. Uh, a lot of schools shut down. Well, well, I, 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 I don't know why schools are closing down. Um, students on Friday don't go to school on Saturdays. And for those in boarding schools, why wouldn't the school secure their children who are not going to vote? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me having children shut down because of an election that is going to hold in one day. Maybe if they're it, looking at antecedents. What antecedents? I mean, have we ever had cause to go because of election go and uh, steal children in schools or abduct children or whatever? I mean, what is the antecedent? I mean, it's, it's, I was at uh, the discussion yesterday in one of the private uh, members' club I, I attended, and I was like, they said, oh, the club is going to be shut down for yesterday. I mean, I said, why do we create unnecessary fear in our people? Why are we adopting this fear culture? Why is this so? I mean, look, the 2015 elections, there were the incidents of, of this kind of violence. We're there in uh, 2011. So why, why, I mean, like I always say, why are we running for what is not pursuing us? <laughs> you know, we just told okay, this was supposed to shut down. I don't think um, there's any business. But I think what we should focus on now is way forward. That is what matters to me. Okay, before and you go to the way forward, I think Gimba Uma is ready now. Gimba, can we have Gimba now? And I think he's in Falomo. Yes, this is just under the bridge. Thank you, Ladi and uh, Ijoma, over there in our Lagos studios. But uh, I am not in the studio today. I am at the backgrounds in the field. And the point that we are at right now is the Falomo roundabout very very uh, busy landmark area here in Lagos and uh, uh, if you can look right behind me you can see the police van that is stationed there has been there all morning the police presence here is actually very heavy uh, perhaps they've taken a little break to uh, walk around so you cannot really see them but their presence is very much uh, been felt here. They're not the only ones. The army, just a few meters away, right in front of me to the left, uh, the army is also positioned there. Their boys have uh, just been patrolling, and we've seen patrol uh, vehicles just going about trying to ensure that there is uh, uh, not any incident of upheavals because you know how it is here in Lagos State. But earlier I also saw some boys, oh, they're still there, playing football right behind me. And uh, it seems to be a very quiet atmosphere now that the elections have been postponed for the next one week and hoping to see that uh, the process will come through and that INEC will be able to come up with solutions to those many concerns uh, with regards to some of the materials that were burnt in some of the states across the Federation and culminating with that incident of uh, over 63 people that were killed in Kaduna just overnight yesterday. So for now, everything seems to be just on the low. People are going about their normal businesses in Falomo area here, very cosmopolitan area in Lagos. Nothing seems to suggest otherwise. People are indeed moving around. Uh, 
joggers just jogging in the morning and uh, that seems to be the feel of the day for Betty. But I did go across social media, which I still have with me, talking about Facebook as well as Twitter and the comments that are coming through. Some people are saying that it is unjust for INEC to have postponed these elections. Others are crying foul, while others are saying that they have spent so much more uh, in terms of monetary terms to try to see that they meet up these days. People have traveled. People have closed businesses, so the economic effect is very, very high. But it is not the first time that this has happened. In 2015, we've had a similar situation when the elections were postponed for about six weeks. This time around, perhaps some people say that it is better that um, INEC gets its acts right than to go into... Okay, so okay. there we have Gimba. So, so like I was saying, for me, I just say, you see, if you look at the pattern, we had this in 2011. Where in fact, in 2011, 20, the election had even been held. On the day. People already started canceled. voting yes. on that day. and it was cancelled. Then in 2015, we also had the same scenario. Well, this scenario, I would distinguish this from 2015, because it's not the same scenario this time. In 2015, the, the postponement of the election by six weeks was at the instance of the executive. If you recall the pattern, the then National Security Advisor was the first to raise the alarm at Chatham House in London. And then there was a national, and INEC insisted it was going ahead. INEC kept insisting. Then the National Council of States meeting was called, where it was now tabled, and they said the security report now, where the chief, then chief of defense staff said he could not guarantee because of um, the then 14 local governments that had been ceded to Boko Haram. That they could not guarantee security and all but that. Mr. Gala, so that was again, on. again, my but point, again, instance, the point right? is whether it was yeah. at the instance of the executive, yes. or it's because of security, yes. or it's because of INEC, yes. we should not get used to I'm, constantly. I, I no, think, I'm just I, saying, I, 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 I get what you're I saying. Think we all agreed on that. Yes. I mean, I, I, so the that issue, was my opening line. Yes. In this but you see, when each, when all of us analyze it and we say, oh, it's, it happened in 2011, it happened in 2015. The point is, it cannot continue to happen. But that is the point that And I'm this particular administration, as one of the, the panel guests in Abuja said, had four years. Yeah. Whether we say it's INEC's responsibility it, 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 and it's it, not the it, APC's it, it, responsibility. It, 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 can I please no. make my okay, point? Okay, go ahead. Whether we say it's not INEC's responsibility, it was the responsibility of the administration to sort out the money, for the logistics for this thing. Yes. So the issue is that they cannot divorce themselves from what has happened, because they were on the other side in 2015 yes. when we had the postponement. Yes. Well, you see, for me, and like in 2015, and like now, I was trying to draw a distinction between the scenario that one was at the instance of the then executive, this is at, by INEC itself. Like you rightly said, disbursement of funds. Um, if I recall very well, INEC budget sat in the National Assembly for so long and was passed very, very late. Um, Gail of the campaign, the Senate president and the speaker decamped, and all of that was put in place. I knew it took the president, it took a lot of pressure for even the Senate, especially, to reconvene to come and pass the INEC budget. We shouldn't forget all of this because we'll also blame INEC for this logistics failure. But again, we should not lose sight of the fact that we, both on the executive and the legislative side, may also have contributed. Let to me put this, you on pause, Mr. Ogala. Yes. I, I understand we have to go on another break at this point, so we'll be back.